All right, guys, gonna head out this morning. It's supposed to be 30 degrees this afternoon, so I've got a couple of old parks. Uh, when I was a kid, I used to stay with my grandmother in town, and we would walk half a mile down the road, and there was a park there. So it was there 43, 44 years ago when I was a you know five, six year old kid. It was there. So we're gonna head there and swing the detector this morning while it's cool. I don't know what we're gonna find. There's also a school down there, which I did find a couple of old coins before. So, hey, it could go right back to turn of the century. Let's go find out. All right, here we are, guys. Behind me, you can see uh, there's an ice rink here, quite a bit of green space. And then behind me, more green space and play equipment. That's what I remember when I was a kid, different play equipment, but I mean, this park has been here at least, I would say, 50, 60 years, maybe more. Let's give it a go, I don't know. What's here, I don't know. Probably lots of junk. That's usually what's here in, in town parks, but gotta try, right? Yeah, first hole. Gonna use the simplex today and look for pocket change, coffee money, Donut money, I don't know. What can you get for 48 cents? Strike two. Three strikes and we're out of here. All right, third hole is a coin. And look at the date, 73. So I was born in 76. Probably would have been about uh, 81 when I used to come here with my grandmother to this park. So we know it's at least goes back to the early 70s. And no, I'm not looking to dig an early 70s park, but the hope is that this goes right back into the 50s or before, and we're gonna find some old silver. That's always the hope, right? But you don't know till you dig. Hey, a quarter. And this one, oh, this one is collectible. They've got a whole bunch of different series up here for different years. I've got a bunch of them. I don't know that I have that one. What year is that? Oh, 2000, right at the top. That's a 2000. Also to note, within those collectible series, there are a couple of them that are worth a lot of money, like 80 or 100 bucks, because they only had uh, a few. They were much rare, and I don't know about that one, so I'll have to check it when I get home. And then we find something promising. That's old horse tack right there. That's a buckle. Ha. Huh. That's that's got to be 30s or 40s. Woo! Guys, it's 9 o'clock and it is broiling out there already. Got to be close to 30 degrees already. I just wanted to mention that this video Metal Detecting Season 6 is number 31, episode 31. So we have done more episodes this season than we did last year. Last year was kind of a bust. Stan and I have been killing it, forcing ourselves to get out. The season is only about a third of the way done. So I just wanted to congratulate myself, Pat on the back, for 31 episodes. And here we are, uh, you know, a third of the way through the season. Okay, so I'm going to do something which I do with all my machines, but I have not done with the Simplex yet, and that is set up a coin cheater mode where we simply were going to discriminate all the way up to 70, and we're on park mode 2. So we're going to try it and see if that speeds up the finding of coins. And right away I find a problem with doing that because there is no all metal uh, button that we can just click when we get a kind of a scritchy just hitting up to 70. I like to push on the Knox all metal mode and check it, you know, is it a big clump of iron? Uh, even the AT Pro had that setting. There is no quick button here to show me all metal. And sure enough, there we go, we've got a nail. So it would uh, hit on the Simplex 70, swing nothing, swing nothing, swing 70. So definitely not a, a strong coin signal, but maybe if the coins are deep, sometimes that's how they sound. All metal mode would have told me right away, that's a nail. Uh, okay, so there is a workaround guys to skip through our different programs all metal is right here All we have to do is push this button over twice then we could swing the uh, Object see what it is and it actually shows us a number even in all metal mode So it would come up down here as 42 or whatever that nail would have been and then we have to just push this button to skip back over 
to park two. So it's four extra button pushes every time we want to do that instead of on the AT Pro or the Knox, it's just push one button, you're in all metal, push it again, you're back into whatever mode you're in. So we can do that with a simplex. It's just gonna cost you time, time and energy. Nocta, I hope you're listening to us hardcore detectorists. For what it is, this machine at 300 some bucks, I'll take that as a workaround. Seriously, it's fine. Okay, five minutes later, I've got another 79 and a 78. So from the looks of it, we have to say this park was probably put in in the 70s. Although that horse tack is throwing me for a loop. We're gonna keep going for a little bit and then we're gonna move around. There's basketball courts and the ice hockey rink over here. We'll go around there too, just to check. You never know. Being swarmed here at the park, I got a whole bunch of new unfrequented world fans. There's more over there. <laughs> so I've been digging with these guys for about 20 minutes. <laughs> what time are you gonna be back here again? <laughs> what time's the next recess? <laughs> Found Bye. real treasure with the kids. We just dug a silver ring. And bye. Bye. Thanks for helping. Hey, look at that. Funny, small world. I actually know the teacher. Those were all four, five, and six year olds. And uh, the teacher was an old friend of mine from 30 years ago. So I just spent the whole recess uh, digging with the kids. And I told them we were looking for treasure. They didn't believe me. And then we actually found a silver ring. So I'm, I'm, passing it on to a whole new generation. They were pretty interested. So I actually had a lot of fun with the kids. Um, it took me back to when my kids were small and I didn't film any of it because you never know with today's privacy laws and the children and whatnot. So I didn't film any of it, but the kids were blown away that the detector could detect worms. Every hole. <laughs> I told them, I said, every hole it'll detect worms. And sure enough, we found some in every hole. Um, yeah, I had a lot of fun. So when I was digging with the kids there, we uh, actually got another anomaly, an old mason jar lid. And that's definitely from like the 40s. So this park, I think, has potential. That's a couple old items we found here, so I'm going to keep digging. Well, modern buckle. Hey, I needed that color. Pretty sure my set at home is out. Yeah, oh, nuts. Come on, I haven't used that all season. Another one. Too bad it's the same color. Uh, American one cent, but I've never seen that one before. Ooh, that's the big boy tab right there. Old English. So the park is behind me, but uh, I found a bit of a bush trail here. I don't know where it goes. I'm just going to take a little five, 10 minute hike. Maybe it leads to another park or an old creek crossing. Who knows? Let's check it out. That's a nice bush down there. Almost kind of want to go in there and swing the detector, but the bugs are still terrible. So we'll stick to the path for now, unless we see signs of an old home site or something. Could very well be. Hmm. I had no idea this trail system was here. I mean, I can hear the highway not too far off. But I know we are in an older section of town. Oh, what do I see? What do I see? Look at that. An old stone wall right there. That is awesome. Look at how flat it is in here. This had to be a home site right here, guys. 100%, no doubt in my mind. I'm gonna swing a little bit before the bugs get terrible. Let's just see if we can find something real quick. What is that? Very, very fine wire of some kind. Hmm. 
So there's a stone wall there, and I just uh, zigzagged all through here. Not a signal anywhere, very clean. And then right here, I just got this one old nail. So, I mean, they didn't move all this stone like this for no reason. That's a property marker from back in the day, right? I mean, it goes on and on. I think it crosses the trail here. I think it keeps going on the other side as well. So we just have to find 100% there would have been a foundation and an old homestead in here somewhere. All right, guys, I crossed uh, this, the, another trail here. I crossed it. I went down, did another 10 minutes all through there. A couple more nails, that's it. But uh, definitely a spot to come back and explore. I guess uh, it only took 17 minutes for the mosquitoes to find me because they're on me now. So I'm getting out of here and heading back for the park. So as we've talked about before, there, there is a ton of effort, you know, back in the day to make those walls to mark your property. They didn't do that unless they were going to stay there, you know, for a lifetime. You built your house, you raised your kids, you were there the whole time. And what happened is the city grows up further away, you know, a mile or two that way. You're not in... Uh, where everything's growing and eventually these places just go to ruin and they get left behind. But it's cool that I found that I had no idea this was here. We'll come back, we'll come back in the fall and we'll swing, we'll bring Stan and we'll swing a lot more.